Today we're going to be going ahead and taking a look at Activity 1.3, our Germ Guide app, and how we can program the waterborne screen for this application. Now, in order to get started, one of the things we're going to need to do is open our MIT App Inventor. You should have already imported the A13 Germ Guide AIA file into MIT App Inventor. And if you did, all you're going to need to do is go ahead and click on that little box and select it to open. That will open up your application in MIT App Inventor. The second step is to go ahead and open up your MIT App Companion since we're using a Chromebook. Once you open up your MIT App Companion, the next thing is to connect your App Companion to your actual MIT App Inventor. In order to do this, we're gonna go up to Connect and you're gonna go ahead and select Chromebook. What that will do is basically pair the two together and from there, we should be able to see whatever we do in MIT App Inventor on our App Companion. Now, for this application, there are four screens that have kind of been already set up for us. And if we go and click on this screen one, you're gonna see that we have four screens to work with. The home screen, which is known as screen one, your crowding screen, vector screen, as well as the water screen. Now we're gonna be working with the water screen today, and then the vectors and crowding screen are pretty much gonna be duplicates of that screen, just using some different media. So what we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and do today is take a quick look at screen one. And that's the screen right here, and we can see that it says home screen up at the top. But what we're gonna go ahead and do is just change a few of these properties just to see how it actually works. Now later, we're gonna take a little bit more of a closer look at this block view and how to do the coding. But for right now, we're just gonna go ahead and set up the user interface. So for this, one of the things we're gonna to wanna to do first is let's get rid of this home screen up at the top. So it's kind of a little title for each screen and we don't really need to see that. So we're gonna make sure we go under our components window, screen one is selected. And under that properties window, we're gonna scroll down to the bottom and check on title visible. That's gonna go ahead and remove that from the top of your screen. The next thing we're gonna go ahead and do is take a look at these three buttons that we have. Now, when we look at our app companion, you can see that they really don't stand out as buttons. They just look as text since it kind of all blends together. So we're gonna go ahead and just change some of these properties just to make them stand out just a little bit more. In order to do this, we're just simply gonna go ahead and click on that waterborne diseases, and then we're gonna go over to our property window. Within that property window, we're gonna scroll down and we're gonna find where it says image. Right now, we can see that there is no image, but we do have some preloaded media already for us in our actual app. So we're gonna go ahead and select image and we're gonna change it to that button image PNG file. Go ahead and select okay. And you're gonna repeat the same steps for the following two buttons. So again, select the image, change the button image and select okay. Once you have completed all three of those, we're ready to move on from our user interface. Now we need to go and take a look at the waterborne screen. And in a way to get there is there's a couple different ways. One way is to go over to our app and select the waterborne button. That will go ahead and select and it will bring us to our water screen. But you will also notice that it will bring you to the actual block view where there is some programming already done for us. We're gonna go ahead and select the back button and that should bring us back to our screen one. Again, it will bring us to our block view. If we wanna go back to our user interface, just simply hit the designer view. Now, if you want to go to another screen from MIT App Inventor, we can select screen one and we're going to go ahead and scroll down and select the screen that we want. In this case, we're going to go ahead and do our water screen. Now that we're on our water screen, you can see that we have basically a title as well as a back button. And when we look at the block view, you're going to notice that we have two basically event handlers that are being used at this time. One is when the back button is clicked, we're going to go back to our home screen. The other is a back press, which on an Android phone or tablet, that's basically just like a back button that's on the actual device. And that will do the same thing as our back button. So let's go ahead and take a look at our user interface for our water screen. And again, we're gonna go to that component view of water screen and we're gonna go and remove that title by making sure it's unchecked. The next thing we're gonna notice is that we have a horizontal arrangement as well as a back button. And that back button is being placed inside of that horizontal arrangement. Now we're gonna talk a little bit more about arrangements as we go through this. So we're just gonna focus right on the back button for right now. Now, some of the things with our back button, 
we already have it brought in for us and you can see there's a button over here it was already brought in and we have some programming already associated with it but we do have the ability to change some of these properties we can make this stand out a little bit more if we want to do so so maybe some of the things you want to play around with is maybe we want to make that font a little bit darker we can go and actually play around with the font size you can change the font face so maybe we want to make that mono so give us a little bit of a different look I would not play around with the height or width of this at this point. Um, right now, they're both set to automatic, so I would leave them alone. The shape we can change. We can play around with, do we want it to look more rounded, maybe more oval-like? Either way, you can select whatever type of shape you want. I'm going to go more with a rounded look for this demonstration. We have our text where text can be entered, so whatever we want that button to say, we can add. And we also have the text color. So maybe you wanna go ahead and play around with that color a little bit, uh, maybe make it more of a cyan color, something that pops a little bit more, you can. You could even change the background of that button as well. Maybe you want that to be more of a lighter gray, that's fine. So you can change that to whatever you really want that to be, as long as it's more aesthetically pleasing where our designer or our customers or consumers uh, have a pleasurable experience with this. So now that our back button is complete, the next thing we need to go ahead and do is we're gonna add a title here. And with your title, we need to give this a name, something that's gonna tell us exactly what this screen is. So in this case, what we're gonna look at doing here is adding what we call a label. And we can get to our label by going over to this user interface and we're gonna scroll down till we see label. And we're going to drag that label in and make sure it goes underneath the back button. Now you'll notice that that label is brought into my component view and we need to give this a name. This is going to help us when it gets to the programming portion of the activity. So we're going to go ahead and rename that and we're going to go ahead and just simply call that label what it is. We already know that it's a label, but we're going to want to make sure that we call this our waterborne since we're on the water screen and label. Once you select OK, you'll notice that the name is going to change in the component view. Now that we have the labels component set, we need to look at the properties. So for right now, you can see that we see absolutely nothing in there, but we do want to play around with some of this. So let's go ahead and make our font a little bit darker. We're going to make it bolded. We're going to need to make it a little bit larger. So let's increase the font size to 30. Again, you can change the font typeface to whatever you want. I'm going to select mono. And from here, we can change the height and the width of our actual label. I'm going to leave the height as automatic, so that will automatically adjust. But I am going to make the width fill parent. And what that's going to do is fill the entire width of our actual screen. Go ahead and select OK, and you'll see that that box is going to move over. Now, the next thing we're going to need to look at doing is viewing that text that's in there. So what you're going to notice is right now there's nothing in there, but really there is. It's just the way that it's actually looking because of the color. Right here, we can see that we have this text for label, and that's what we should really see. The reason why we're not seeing this is because the text color is set to default, which is matching the background of our tablet. If we change that color to, let's say, white, now all of a sudden we're going to see that text show up we're going to go ahead and replace that text for label with waterborne diseases and that's going to be our title for our actual screen once we select that you're going to notice that it'll change and the next step is to change the text alignment so that we can center that on the screen now that we have our title label the next thing to do is add multiple buttons to our actual screen so we have these buttons over here, but what we're going to do in order to make these more aesthetically pleasing and be able to manipulate them a little bit more, we're going to use what we call a vertical arrangement. And that can be found under the layout drawer. When we go in that layout drawer, make sure you select vertical arrangement, not vertical scroll arrangement. We'll look, look at that a little bit later. For right now, take your vertical arrangement and we're going to drop that down below our title label. Now for this vertical arrangement, you're gonna notice that it comes in white, but on the screen, it does not. That's gonna help us to place things inside of this and make it a little bit easier to manipulate those. 
So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna go back to that user interface for right now, and we're gonna take a button, and we're gonna drag that button in, and you're gonna notice that my arrangement changed sizes on me. So we're gonna take a second button, and what we wanna make sure is that that second button is below text for button one, but still within that vertical arrangement. Now that we have our two buttons inside of the actual arrangement, we can play around with some of the properties that's gonna make this a little bit better or better placed on the actual screen. So what we're gonna do is go back to that vertical arrangement. And what we wanna look at is we wanna align this so that everything is in the center of that arrangement. The other thing we wanna do is play around with the height and width. Now the height and width for these are gonna be both what we call fill parent. So again, this will take the entire height of the screen that's remaining. And the width will also be fill parent, which will take the width of the screen. Now you can see that our buttons are centered in that arrangement and they should be centered on our screen. Now, if you do notice on your companion that it doesn't look like it's doing what it's supposed to, just make sure you go ahead and expand that a little bit and you'll see that it is indeed actually centering. But because we're using a split screen, it could become a little bit problematic when you're trying to set some of this up. So you may have to go ahead and resize that just so that it gets centered for you, but it should be doing exactly what you're telling it in your MIT App Inventor. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is look at our buttons. So again, we have multiple buttons, so we need to give these buttons a specific name. So I'm gonna go to button one and rename that, and we're gonna call this our cholera button. And we're gonna go ahead and select okay. So now that my component view is done, let's look at the properties of my cholera button. We're gonna go ahead and make sure that we bold that font. Let's make it stand out a little bit. Let's change the font size of this and let's go with a larger font of 36. I'm gonna stick with my mono typeface. The height and width, we're gonna go ahead and change to specific pixels. We're gonna leave the width alone, but the height we're gonna change to pixels in this case and we will learn more about pixels later on. So we're gonna set that to 90 pixels. And then one of the last things we need to do is change what the text of that button says. So we're gonna go ahead and change that and make that cholera so we know exactly what that button is doing. And then from there, let's go ahead and change the image. We're gonna go ahead and use that button image again and select okay. Now that you've done that, now you have this nice little collar button right in the middle of the screen. So let's go ahead and repeat the same steps for button two, but this time we're going to go ahead and call this the E-Tech button. Once you go ahead and rename that, select OK. We're going to go over to the properties. We'll make it bold. We'll change the font face, the font size to 36, the typeface to mono. We're going to change the height and we're gonna set that to 90 pixels. Select okay. Our width for that one, we're gonna go ahead and make sure that we leave that as automatic. And then we're gonna change the image of this to button image PNG. And last but not least, we're gonna go ahead and change our actual text so that it says eTech. And we can go ahead and select okay. Now you'll notice that your buttons are both the same size here and we are kind of ready to move on. So let's take a look at what that looks like on our actual app. So right now, what we have is our basic screen and you can see that everything is kind of condensed a little bit. We can add some spacing to this and we can use spacing by using what we call arrangements. So I'm gonna go back to my layout drawer and what I wanna grab here is I'm gonna grab this horizontal arrangement. And when I bring this horizontal arrangement in, I wanna make sure it goes right between that cholera and that e-tech button. And what you'll notice is that it's gonna create a space. We're not gonna put anything in it. We're gonna use this more of as a spacer than anything. As far as the height goes, let's just make this 5% of the screen. We don't need that large of a space. That's gonna space that out just a little bit. The other thing you're probably gonna notice is that we probably want some kind of spacing below that title so we can do the same exact thing. Just make sure that this arrangement goes above the other vertical arrangement and below my label. So you'll see there's my water label, there's the vertical arrangement, there's that arrangement I just brought in. 
And again, we're gonna go ahead and make sure that the height of this is just set to 5%. If you want, you can go ahead and center that if you would like. Okay, you'll notice that anything you put in there gets centered, but not necessarily centering this on the screen. And we're gonna talk about that later on. Now, notice we don't really see any of that except for on our actual app. So you've now completed the user interface side of this. So what we need to look at next is how do we actually get this to work? In order to get to the programming side, we're gonna go to our block view. And from here, we're gonna look at the coding blocks or the event handlers that we have. Now, we only have two options on this screen. What happens when the caller button is clicked or what happens when the e-tech button is clicked? So now that we have that, we're gonna go to our blocks and we're gonna find those buttons that we added. And this is why it's important that we give them a specific name. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that caller button because I wanna know what happens when that caller button is clicked. I also wanna know what happens when that e-tech button is clicked. So this is just gonna be the beginning part of our code. There's gonna be some more tweaks to this that we're gonna make later on in another activity. But for right now, all we want to have happen is when we click that caller button is that the media plays for that actual button. And remember, we have this preset media already installed for us. So you have this caller MP3. You also have this eTech MP3 as well. So how are those guys actually going to play? Well, what we're going to need to do is call these players. So we're going to need to make sure that we go back to this designer view and we're gonna go back to that user interface. And what we're gonna go ahead and do now is add a media player. So these are gonna be most of your buttons or components that you're gonna be using, but because we're using media, we're gonna go down to the media drawer, we're gonna find player, and we're gonna drop that in. And this is what we call a non-visible component. So you're not gonna see an item on the screen, but it is there. We're gonna go ahead and rename that and we're gonna call that, that's the, gonna be the cholera player. And then we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing, bring another player in, and we're gonna go ahead and rename that one as the e-tech player as well. Now, once we have those names in, we're ready to kind of move on with our block view, because now we have a way to actually call something. But before we jump over there, let's go back to our cholera player. Right now, the source file for this is nothing, which means if we call that player, there's really no music, okay? Think of kind of like a CD player. Uh, if you try to turn it on and there's nothing in there, it's not gonna play. Same thing with any type of MP3 or iPod. If you don't have a song pulled up, it's not gonna play. So the source file we need to click on and we need to select for our cholera player, we want the cholera MP3. We're gonna leave the volume alone and we'll leave the rest of that alone as well e-tech player change the source file find the e-tech mp3 and select ok once you have that done now we can go over to the block view and finish out the programming so what we want to basically have done is when the caller button is clicked we want to play that caller mp3 so we're going to scroll down and find the caller player and we're going to go ahead and call that caller player to play or in this case, we're gonna use the start. So we're gonna go ahead and select when caller button is clicked, we're gonna call it to start. And when the e-tech button is clicked, we're gonna call the e-tech player to start. Now we should have our app completed at this point. Again, we're gonna add some things later on, but for right now, this is all we really need. You can go and give this a try. Go ahead and click on that caller button and we should hear that MP3 play. Cholera is an intestinal illness caused by the B. cholera bacterium. This bacterium can be found in contaminated food or water. Symptoms of cholera include diarrhea, nausea, vomiting, and dehydration. People with cholera should be treated right away for dehydration and loss of electrolytes. Severe cases can result in death. So now you can see that there is no way for us to stop the player at this point. But later on, we're gonna learn how to use conditional statements to make sure our app functions properly.